Hello, welcome back to the last lecture of week five, also the last lecture on the second topic, divide and conquer. In this lecture, we will finally get to the subset sum problem and see if we can use divide and conquer to come up with an algorithm better than the naive brute force. First, let's look at the definition of the problem again. Given a set S and a target value K, can we find a subset of S that sums to K? The naive brute force algorithm for subset sum is to enumerate all 2 to the power of n possible subsets and compute their sums. So its running time is exponential. Now, what about the divide and the conquer? How much can it help? So divide. It's clear to us now that we want to split set S into two equal sized subsets. This can be done arbitrarily, meaning we can put a randomly picked set of numbers in S1 and then the rest in S2, as long as the two subsets are of the same size. Assume that there is a subset S prime of S that sums to K. We have three possible cases. First, all the elements of S prime are in S1. Second, all the elements of S prime are in S2. Third, some elements are in S1 and some are in S2. For the first two cases, when S prime is entirely contained in either S1 or S2, it is easy to combine the result. However, the third case is much more complex. We need to find the two subsets, S prime 1 and S prime 2, that are from S1 and S2 separately, but sum to K. This seems to fit the two-set pair sum problem, but we need to make some modifications, or we need to construct the two new sets first. So this is the idea. We split S into two equal halves, S1 and S2. Then we enumerate all the subsets of S1, compute their sums to create a new set A1. We enumerate all the subsets of S2, compute their sums to create a new set A2. For instance, if S is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then we can randomly split S into two subsets, And then we create two new sets, A1, where A1 has all the sums of subsets of S1. So we have 2, 4, 5. That's when a subset has only one item. We could also have 2 plus 4, that's 6. 4 plus 5, that's 9. 2 plus 5, that's 7. We also have 2 plus 4 plus 5, so that's 11. We could also have the empty set subset, so that'll give us a sum of 0. So that's how we compute A1. We could have the same for A2. Try that on your own. The reason we're doing this is because either A1 has a value x, and x equals k, or a2 has a value y, y equals k, or we have x from a1, y from a2, where x plus y equals k. We have three possible cases. So here is the pseudocode algorithm for subset sum. We create two new sets, a1, A2, we can quickly check if K is contained in A1 or in A2. Otherwise, we call the two set pair sum algorithm we discussed previously, and we search two elements, each from A1 and A2, that can sum to K. 
This does not seem like a very efficient algorithm since creating the two new sets A1 and A2 takes exponential time already. But we are interested in knowing if this divide and conquer algorithm is better than the brute force algorithm. First, recall that the complexity of the two set pair sum algorithm is big O of n log n. We talked about this in the last lecture. If this looks unclear to you, please feel free to go back to the previous lecture. Now let's find out the complexity of the divide and conquer subset sum algorithm. Let's first denote the cardinality of set S as n. Each of S1 and S2 has half of the numbers in S, so they have n over 2 numbers. Enumerating all the subsets of A1 and computing their sums will take big O of 2 to the power of n over 2 time, and the same for A2. Then we have an if-else statement here. Tracking and seeing if k is in A1 or in A2 takes linear time. The two-set pair sum algorithm takes this much time. So this component has the highest computational complexity in this algorithm. So the overall complexity of the divide and conquer subset sum algorithm is big O of n times 2 to the power of n over 2. Now you may wonder, wait, this is still exponential. How much an improvement did we get? Now we compare the complexity of the brute force algorithm, big O of 2 to the power of n, with that of the divide and the conquer algorithm, big O of n times 2 to the power of n over 2. We call this sub-exponential, since the exponent is smaller than n. It, in fact, grows much slowly than 2 to the power of n. Here is a table with some example n values, not even that large. It shows, indeed, the efficiency is significantly improved. Now you may wonder, can we divide the set S into three or four subsets? Does it help? When we divide the set S into, say, three subsets, so we will be able to get three times two to the power of n over three. However, we'll have more possibilities where the solution subset is located. We could have all of them in S1, all of them in S2, all of them in S3. We could have part of them in S1 and a part of them in S2. We could have part of them in S2, part of them in S3. Or we could have part of them in S1, part in S2, and part in S3. So we'll have to consider all these combinations, and that will actually add complexity to this. So overall complexity won't improve that much. The same idea for dividing S into four subsets. They do not really improve the time efficiency of the algorithm. You may also wonder, this is the first time we see a divide and conquer algorithm that does not recurse. We only divide it once. Can we use recursion? We certainly can. And please go ahead and try. A short answer to this question is that recursion does not help with the efficiency, since looking for a solution involving part of S1 and part of S2 will still have the same complexity. We see that divide and conquer does not always recurse. Dividing only once can help improve the algorithm efficiency, especially for solving extremely difficult problems. Of course, this is only the best algorithm that I know of. There might be better algorithms out there, or you might be the person who discovers a better one. Here is a fun little exercise for you, and that will wrap up this lecture and also week five and our second topic, divide and conquer.